Hey guys, uh, heading off for a bit of a goat hunt today, um, but I might do it a little bit differently. I've been getting a lot of uh, questions and comments and stuff on my both uh, my YouTube channel and my Instagram. There's people uh, looking to get into hunting and just beginner hunters asking, you know, what to do, where to go, that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, I thought I might do it a little bit different and go through a few tips and tricks on this video. Just little things to, you know, help people getting into hunting or, you know, just help you become a better hunter. So, let's get amongst it. Now a lot of people are going to start asking gear, what gear do I have, what camo do I wear, what uh, bow or rifle do I shoot, all that sort of thing. And that's very subjective, it's all about, all about what, uh, what's best for you what feels right for you, all that sort of thing. Um, camo is much of a muchness when you really get down to it, as long as it breaks up your outline, all that matters, because uh, these animals see things a lot differently than we do. Uh, there's two exceptions to the gear that I'll talk about. Uh, one, boots. Quality boots will increase your hunting ability tenfold, hundredfold, thousandfold. Have quality boots, uh, having good feet makes all the difference when you're climbing the hills. The other exception, quality glass. Always have quality glass because you're going to be doing a lot of sitting and glassing. So you want something that's just really clear, um, can see a good distance. Um, I like the uh, 10 by 32s, but 8 by 42 is good too. 10 by 42, the yeah, size is relative. It's it's more about the quality of glass. So yeah, that's you know quality glass, quality boots, and you're well on your way to succeeding. So I've spotted a mob of goats, they're over there, um, they look probably, I'd say, at a guess, 250 yards away, but I'll just confirm that just for shits and giggles of seeing how far off I am. 265. So yeah, um, yeah there I've got like, okay wind, it's going across, sweeping down the valley, here on the other side of the valley, um, so it's alright as it is. Um, looks like I'll have to come up the hill at them. Don't really like that, but you got to do what you got to do with the wind. Wind direction is really important. It's probably the thing that's either going to help or hinder your stalk the most. Because these animals rely on their sense of smell more than anything else. And they can smell a million times better than we can. So, yeah. Um, always check your wind direction. Pays to have... Uh, wind indicator, any kind of wind indicator, doesn't really matter. Like, once again, this is, comes down to the gear thing, personal preference. I'm using the wind drift one at the moment. I like it, made in New Zealand, so it's always good to buy local. But yeah, it's, they're real simple things, just a bottle of powder, give it a shake, screw it, screw it. Wind's going that way. Easy as. So it's a big mob of goats. They um, all seem to be very much on the move, so I'm just going to sit and watch, see what they do. So, um, they seem to be looping around um, closer to me, which would be good, as long as they don't get too far this way and cut my wind. Um, they're actually helping me, so I'll just sit and wait and watch. There's uh, Billy that I've been targeting for a while. He's actually on my last video, the uh, white one. Um, I've had a few blown stalks with him. So he's the one I'm looking for. And this is the mob he's always with. Um, I haven't seen him yet, but he's bound to be in there somewhere. But, um, I think I'm going to pack up, move down this way more. Let them just keep coming to me because soon they're going to cut my wind and this is going to be all over. So yeah, I need to get ahead of them and um, hopefully set up and the uh, Billy will walk into me. Now, hunting is a combination of hiking hard and sitting and waiting. Uh, but ideally when you move, you want to have cover. Whether that's trees, um, topography of the ground, anything. You don't want to be moving in sight. Because movement is more what these animals see. They don't really see you when you're still. 
because you blend in. Um, but as soon as you move, they see you from a mile away. So you stay nice and cover. It's a good thing I decided to move because the wind's starting to shift. It was starting to blow in their direction, so it's good that I got out of there. But yeah, now I just gotta find a new spot to reassess. See if I can find my belly. Always keep an eye on the wind direction. Single most important thing you can do. Now the mob of them is in there, and ideally I want to get over here so that they can just come up this way and I can just sit and wait and get a shot at the goat I want a shot at. Now if you need to cover open ground, like I've got behind me, um, you need to wait until you've got your best opportunity to move without anything seeing you, and then get across that open ground as quickly as you can because that is your most vulnerable time. So yeah, let's uh, see if we can get across it. The goats are starting to get on top of the hill, so it could be a bit interesting. behind some cover now. Didn't seem to disturb them at all which is good. They just seem to be mulling around the same area. Now if you're in the rain like this don't be put off. Um, hunting in the rain can be really good. It keeps your scent down because it keeps the air nice and heavy and it also just keeps all the noise of your movement down as well so I, I actually prefer hunting in the rain for those reasons. Um, goats that we're hunting today they don't really seem to mind the rain too much. Try to avoid tunnel vision and check out all of your surroundings because you never know what you might see. So here are these goats here. Um, then I've got over here. There's a goat all on his own. So he'd be an ideal one to go for first with the wind being the right way. I can come back at these others after. So he looks like a lone belly so he'd be good to stalk in on. Stalking in on animals on their own is always better. Just less eyes to avoid and less variables to take into account so I'm going to go after him first and then I'll make my way back to these ones after. It's where I am this hill here provides a good bit of cover to get around then I can go up around this one to him over there so yeah it's it's looking really good to go for him first. This is probably the hardest point because anywhere here I could get skylined and that's, it's all over you want to stay off the skyline they're just so easy to pick out. But yes, I've got to be really careful. Keep my eyes wide open. Now I want to get up into this tea tree because he's just on the other side of this hill. And this will be good cover just to make a plan. There he is. He looks like he's got a girlfriend there in the tea tree too. got on alert for some reason. Right, they've gone up over the hill. Um, I think the wind might have swirled and they might have caught my wind. But if I head up really quickly, I should be able to get onto them. Okay, they've gone through the fence and they're off into the bush. Which doesn't lean well to filming. So I'm just going to let them go. They're really towy. My guess is they've been hassled a lot. Generally goats are pretty forgiving unless they've been really hammered. So I'm guessing that group's seen a lot of action. But uh, yeah, I'll just head back after this first lot. Nothing would happen with them, they'll still be chill. So um, that's my plan of attack. It's just good to be out in the hills. It's, uh, this is my happy place. When um, things are just sort of getting too much or too heavy for me. Just grab my bow or my rifle and head into the hills. Successful or not, I always feel better afterwards. It's climbing 
else is hard work. I've had a lot of downtime lately, so it's killing me. Time to do a bit of climbing. And uh, hopefully it's all downhill after that. But, uh, we'll see what happens. The wind's not too bad at the moment, but it's chopping and changing a lot, so we'll see. The reason for this is simply you want to be able to move as easily and freely as possible. Now the reason isn't because it was a bad shot, but simply I would have ruined my chances at the billy. Now on a stalk like this you want to stay as low as possible and try to keep your silhouette as inhuman as possible. And as always, take advantage of any cover. As you can see, the Billy and his friends are nice and relaxed, which will make it a lot easier for a stalk. Side of dropping all your gear at the top of the hill. Now I'm stalking in on a big group. You can get away with a bit of noise because they're hearing each other moving around, biting and pulling at the grass and stuff like that. So a little bit of noise you're going to get away with. Obviously, you still don't want to stand on any sticks and stuff like that because that's an unnatural noise. Um, you know, they're not really heavy enough on one foot to snap a decent sized stick that'll make a good noise. So, yeah, that's they know something's wrong. You might hear on the video of the goats sounding like they're sneezing and that's a warning call. Uh, it was the mob that first walked past me. It started cutting my wind as they got up the hill a bit. Um, luckily it didn't really bother the uh, big billy or his uh, couple of mates. Goats aren't really the most trusting animals. They don't really take what their mates say too seriously unless they can see it too. So it'll pique their interest for a sec and they'll look around but then they'll just go back to what they're doing if they don't see what their mate saw. 
if you find yourself where the uh, when an animal's just staring at you, the best thing you can do is just stay still, just not move at all. Um, if you're on the skyline, you're in a bit of a hard spot, but still the same thing. Just don't move a muscle. And you could be standing still in the most awkward position for 15 minutes, just having a stare down. But um, like the best thing you can do is just sort of angle your head down and uh, just don't let them see your eyes. Because there's just something about when you're looking at them and they know you're looking at them but if you sort of angle your head down like such they can't see you're looking at them and you can just look at their feet to know they're still there um, and it helps relax them a bit faster it's uh, really weird but yeah it's a good thing to know because it definitely works so just goes to show hunting's a patience game uh, you can't force anything if you try and force a um force a stalk while they're in the bad position you just you're gonna blow them out. Um, so it just pays to wait when there's nothing good and then they might give you the opportunity to stalk closer or they might give you the shot. So yeah, just gonna wait it out, wait it out. It's painful, it really is to just sit and do nothing. Especially if you're in a horrible um, spot like I was and I was sitting with my leg uh, cramped in a really weird way but I couldn't move. But uh, yeah, it all pays off in the end if you just uh, do it how you're supposed to rather than forcing it. Sometimes it pays to wait before tracking an animal, but with this blood trail there was no need. Man, he's cool. Well here he is, uh, super stoked, uh, it was a hell of a stalk, but uh, yeah, got the goods in the end so it was worth all that hard work, always is, even if you don't get the animal, um, it's, it's just always good to put in the work, do some learning when you don't succeed, and even do some learning when you do succeed, but yeah, um, I'm really happy with him, take some uh, meat and take the head, double lunged him, he was down pretty quick, he expired in I'd say 30 seconds tops, so it was a really good uh, efficient kill. I had a blast this hunt, um, got a good billy to show for it too, um, it's a lot of hard work but it uh, goes to show you do the mahi you get the treats, um, hope you guys learned something, uh, if you did give us a like, drop a comment down below or hit me up on Instagram uh, at jchunting_nz. Um, I look forward to hearing from you.